How goes it, everybody? Spike Daddy here, and uh, yeah, welcome to a uh, quick XML tutorial on Donovan's mods. So I'm going to show you in this uh, video right here how to get them installed properly and kind of what all the mods kind of go through and what they do. So let's go through and take a look. So we've got the link obviously up here. I'll have that down in the description below. It's in all of my seven days to die videos, but I'll make sure to put it in this one. So this is for Alpha 21, obviously for seven days to die. Uh, and up over here, uh, the link will take you to this page right here. And then you just download the source code. So we'll download it. Let's go ahead and open it in here in the folder. And then we're going to extract it. Make sure that we uh, go through the process of extracting. I'm just using one of my spare monitors, guys, because my other monitor is 1440p and I don't want to mess with it at all. Now, when you go inside of here, you'll see that inside here, there's a bunch of stuff in here. It might be kind of confusing for some, especially if it's your first time doing modlets. Um, so in this case, we're going to go into modlets and there's a different ones in here. So you've got a la carte. Uh, you got AIO, you've got Night Fog, and UI. So if you go into the README, oh, not that one, if you go into the AIO README, you'll notice that it has all these mods included. Better batons, better blades, better bridges, buffs, cement, collectors, dies, power tools, traps, vehicles, less grind, longer loot bags, mega stacks, more books, more loot bags, more perks, pick me up, and wraith. So let's kind of go through here. So the better batons, blades, and all the better ones just improve quality of life for a lot of those particular things. So for example, better batons, it actually gets it up a little bit closer on par with the damage of other weapons like the spears, as well as a few other perks amongst that line. Better blades, same way. So your axes and everything like that, your other items along that line uh, actually, we could probably go inside of the a la carte. Let's go inside of a la carte and let's do better planes. So here, this kind of gives the whole thing right here significantly more damage, making them more viable for end game. Effects of uh, uh, effects follow the following weapons, knives, machete, spears, and fire axes. Additionally, spears and axes can now be used to butcher animals. No more having to carry around a machete. No more having to carry around, you know, a knife or a bone knife to harvest animals, you can do it with spears and axes now, and it harvests essentially about the same. Um, anything that's inside of a la carte is all the mods that are actually inside of the AIO. Now, with that being said, you don't want to go into a la carte and get, you know, better traps and then have the AIO completely in there as well, because that'll cause a little bit of uh, overwriting issues. And you might see duplicates of certain things in your crafting inventory. So you don't want to do that. Uh, the AIO is a good one, mainly because, like I said, it goes through the whole deal with all the extra stuff here. Better dies, I know for a fact, is one that uh, you can scrap the dies for 15 paint and then turn it into any color you want. It's just a nice, nice little touch. Better vehicles than that increases the uh, amount of gasoline in them. It also increases a little bit more on the speed, as well as a little bit less of the durability loss when taking damage. Better collectors. This one right here is a nice one. Let's actually go through and uh, here, we'll just, we'll just go through the a la carte. Let's go through the a la carte and let's kind of go through and give a quick rundown on them. So better batons, blades. Let's do better batons. Check out the readme on that one. Significantly more damage, making them more viable for end game. Pipe batons and stun batons. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, better bridges allows advanced rotation on garage doors and draw bridges. So instead of just your standard one, you can actually invert it and make it be like a, uh, instead of it folding downwards uh, like this, you can make it so it folds upwards or you can have it so it goes on its side, so on and so forth. Uh, better buffs tweaks the hunger and thirst triggers to be more realistic. Um, Instead of the thirst and hunger going off at like 50%, it's now like 30% or something closer to that. If I recall correctly, better cement. The forge no longer creates cement mix instead. Uh, craft the cement mix directly in the cement mixer with equal parts of sand and clay. Concrete no longer requires sand, just cement mix and small rocks. So a little bit more of a realistic aspect on it, a little less grind, which is nice. And let's go into better collectors. This is a good one. I like this one right here. So 
this model it improves the dew collectors. Now this one right here isn't compatible with EAC. So if you are wanting to have EAC and always run EAC, this isn't compatible with it because this does change the DLL. This one right here, it creates twice as much water. So there's six slots in there as opposed to just three slots. Um, twice the water production, three times faster when foggy, five times faster when it's raining, which makes sense because when it's foggy, that means there's normally more dew. And when it's raining, obviously it's going to catch rain, not just dew. Uh, it also adds a craftable water filter instead of having to go to the trader and buying it for 2,500 dukes or whichever the price of it is on there. I think it's 2,500 dukes unless you've got bartering and everything. You can actually craft it. Now, the crafting for it is not as simple. You still need coal. You need sand. You need duct tape. You need pipes. You need uh, cloth as well for the filter. So, And you need scrap polymer. So you need quite a bit of stuff actually in there to actually make the water filter. So it's not like it's just a simple crafting solution. And there you go. You still got to go out and find the stuff and craft it. Um, there is a con to this one, though. It no longer functions when below freezing. So if you are making a base in the winter biome and relying on your dew collectors to get you all the water, you might want to make a dew collector farm somewhere outside of the winter biome because when it does drop below freezing, it doesn't produce anything. And I can confirm that it threw me for a loop the first time I tried it. <laughs> so let's go through a few others. I already explained that one right there. A lot of the better ones, like I said, they just, you know, makes a chainsaw and nail gun auger way more useful, a little bit faster on the upgrades and so on and so forth. Uh, better traps, same kind of deal. Actually, this one here is one of the newer ones he put in here. So electric or blade traps and electric fences now have higher durability. The blade traps moved from... 2,000 durability to 7,000 durability, so they might actually survive a demo explosion if it happens to go off next to it. Electric fences move from 200 to 500 durability. Blade traps do do a little bit more damage, but with that being said, since they're definitely a bit more overtuned, instead of being unlocked at level 25 in the traps skill books, it's level 50 now. And let's go back through. Uh, obviously, better vehicles we went through. Less grind. This is a really nice one. So this one right here increases the amount of resources obtained from many sources. Also lowers the requirement for building some listed items. The intention is to lower the grind level of the game a bit for those who don't enjoy that aspect as much. Changes to the recipes are minimal, but do include things like most foods now that use meat have a lower meat requirement. So instead of it costing, you know, five meat to make one boiled meat, it's more along the lines of two meat or three meat or whichever it is. All I know is for the meat recipes and all that stuff like that, it equates when you finally get your uh, master chef maxed out, it drops it down to just one meat to cook those particular recipes. Iron bars now take 50% of the iron needed in vanilla. 100 iron is a bit much for a single iron bar block, which I agree on. Uh, I know they give you more bones for harvesting now, but you should be able to make a bone knife with only one bone. Yeah, yeah, instead of using five bones to make one bone knife, yep. Burnt nests will now give more eggs. So bacon and eggs galore, which is nice. Beakers are also now craftable in the forge, because we all know what it's like to go through a playthrough. Finally unlock the ability to make the crafting station, and you can't find for the life of you a beaker inside a loot or at a trader. So that just kind of adds a little bit nice quality of life sort of stuff like that in there. And let's see here. Longer loot bags is basically just that. Uh, the loot bags stay on the ground longer. So, because, I mean, it's... I, I noticed this back in this this part right here. Longer loot bags have actually been around since, like, Alpha 17, I believe. Um, I was doing a Horde Night. All these bags were dropping, and the Horde Night was still going on. I couldn't get out there and loot them, and I was seeing loot bags disappear. And it's like, I'm losing loot because I can't get out to them to loot them. So that's all it does, is it makes the loot bags last longer on the ground. That way... You've got more of time to actually go and pick them up, which is really nice. Mega stacks uh, basically increases the uh, stacks of everything. We'll actually go through here and see if he actually gives values. Yeah, a very large amount. Yeah, so this this is perfect for you guys that enjoy playing more uh, along the lines of a... Uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit more along the lines of a uh, compactness, like one... One storage box can hold all the items you want. This is definitely the mod for you. This is definitely a good one to have because I think it makes it to where wood, stone, clay, sand, all that. Uh, a full stack is like 30,000. 
dukes are 25,000. It would be 30,000, but when it gets above 25,000, uh, the game breaks for some reason with the dukes. I'm not sure why. Um, but it makes most of those things stack up really high. Ammo goes to 1,000 instead of just like 150 or 500 or whichever. So it's kind of nice in that case. More books, more loot bags. Those ones are obvious. It increases the chances of finding more skill books and loot uh, or schematics. More loot bags. Obviously, the zombies have a higher chance of dropping loot bags. I don't know if he gives percentages on here. Increases the drop rate. 5% for normal, 10% for feral, and 20% for irradiated zombies. Nice and simple. Straightforward kind of modlet. More perks is one that increases the number of perks you gain per level to two instead of just one. So a little bit faster progression. Uh, the Night Vision Helmet Mod. This is actually a brand new one that I don't think I've actually talked about in the videos when this episode goes live. Because I'm actually going to get this video redder, uh, edited and rendered actually and put up there pretty quick. Uh, to get up on YouTube just to get the information out. But this mod right here is one that me and him kind of worked on a little bit. It's a night vision goggle that could be attached to any helmet as a mod. And while they're not generally available in normal loot, you may find them attached to military and SWAT helmets. If I'm not mistaken, 80% of the 80% of the military helmets that are out there will have them, and 60% of the SWAT helmets will spawn with them. Outside of that, they are not in the loot tables. There's no schematic to craft them, so it's kind of like a little treat if you happen to find a military helmet that has it on there. You can then pull the mod off and then put it on any helmet you want. Same thing with the SWAT one. And then we've got the pick me up. Pick me up is a classic that I enjoy. You can modify blocks are wood spikes, iron spikes and bar fences. So you can actually pick those up after being placed because there's nothing like throwing down a bunch of wood spikes. And now you got to leave and you got to break them all down and remake more. This right here gives the ability to pick them up. Obviously, they have to be fully repaired before you can pick them up. You can't just pick them up while they're damaged. And then another wonderful thing that I spawned an idea and he put it into uh, <laughs> he put it into the game. It's a uh, new zombie type. The Wraith. It's fast, agile and deadly that comes out at night. It is one that is a uh, the, the crawler, the crawler guy that's got the uh, severed waist, basically, where it's just got the little spine hanging out kind of deal. It's that one, but it's upright, floating and as fast as our lean and hits pretty hard too. So nice little spooky zombie, really. It's it's creepy. It makes weird noise. It's it's great. It's a great addition. So those are all the ones that are actually included in the AIO. So we'll go over the other ones here. So now we've got Night Fog. Night Fog is a ungodly, holy crap fog that you can hardly see anywhere out, but it definitely gives the game more of a creepy feeling. And I 100% agree. I used to run with the Night Fog on my Fear the Butter series, but it got so bad. I would be out and about. It would turn dark. I'd be riding on a motorcycle or a mini bike and I couldn't see jack crap. But if you want like an immersive scare the crap off you kind of horror game esque kind of fog, this is the freaking mod for you. Throw this inside of your mod folder. And when nighttime hits in that, you might be too scared to go out at night. Just saying. And the UI. Obviously, the updates for the UI. Um, Moves the food and water bar to the left underneath the health and stamina bars. Um, shows them a little bit bigger, shows the percentages. So it's not just these little tiny itty bitty bars and that that are hardly visible underneath your toolbar. Um, moves the experience bar to underneath the tool belt and also makes it larger. So it's easier to see your experience gain. And also adds the locks locks function into the UI for shorting the stash buttons. So, so wow, I need a beverage. So what it does is it makes it to where when you open up your inventory, there's actually a couple arrows next to where you can do the transfer all or transfer just the items that are already in the box. When you select it over and it counts through your lines. You know what? Let me actually. Can I do this? I think I can do this. Let me uh, let me actually boot up seven days to die really quick here. And I'll actually show you the UI because I think that's going to be the better option to go through and show everybody. Now, I'm, I'm recording this with OBS as opposed to recording it with action. So I'm hoping that everything gets portrayed properly. Um, let's just go back into the one that I was actually just doing. I actually just recorded an episode for uh, how to build the horde base that I use and kind of go over some of the reasonings for it and a little bit more in detail and other potential fixes and changes that you can kind of do to it to your own leisure. So let's go through and let's uh, let's jump into here. So let's actually uh, pull that off. 
Let's drop on seven days to die. Oop, I gotta wait for the program to respond here. And actually, let me go ahead and turn off my face cam here so you can get the full UI. Come on, OBS, you can do it. Pop up. Are you gonna do it? And this is why I only use OBS for streaming and I don't use it for recording because it likes to be a real pain in the rear. Come on. Are you gonna pop up? No, you're not gonna pop up. Are you kidding me? All right, hold on. Let's try this. Let's click on you. Let's go into settings. Yeah, it should be seven days to die. Here, let's just do this. Do that. Let's switch you over to you. Switch you over to you. Click on OK. There it is. OK, so here we go. So here is essentially the UI. So if we were to do. Uh, I need to make a box. Actually, I got a box down here. So when you bring this up right here, you notice you've got your. Uh, your first click moves, you got your sort, sort container, all that stuff like that. This right here. So let's say, for example, I've got you in there. And I'm going to put you right here. I've got you right there. I'm going to put a little bit of you in there. And I've got some of you guys in here, right? Okay, so now when you click on this, it's going to transfer all that stuff. Well, that's okay. But it's kind of annoying sometimes because sometimes you don't want to have, you know, you don't want to have the gas and you don't want to have your shotgun shells actually being deposited in here. So what you do is you click on this little arrow right here, move it over to two. These first two blocks are going to be ignored. So when you click on it, it doesn't transfer them. Really, really helpful. Now, there is one caveat to this. Every time that you exit the game and go back into the game, you are going to have to redo your little dilly dells here. And that's the same thing for your storage box here. So it locks them. So if you want to do this and then take those items, it pulls items from over there, but it ignores those ones. So like if I wanted to make sure that it grabs my shotgun shell, I just make sure that that one's available. And there's there's no way to make it to where, okay, I want the bottom ones over here locked. I want the top ones locked and I want these middle ones locked. So unfortunately, it doesn't work like that, at least not that I know of yet. So you have to go through and do this. So like that's nine or wait, yeah, eight. So that's eight across the top. So now we can do this take it, it'll just take those ones and leave those ones there. So that's essentially it. And as you can see, you can see the UI now. You've got your experience bar down here. You've got your food and your thirst over here. Instead of it being stupid small underneath here and very, very thin experience bar up at the top. Just makes it a little bit nicer, uh, a little bit easier to read. Nice little quality of life. Uh, let's see, is there anything else inside of here that I really wanna go over? Oh, you know what, I might as well show you the uh, Let's do military. I don't know if I can, if it's gonna spawn with it on here. Hmm, it may not actually be inside of here. Ah, there's the mod. So inside of the creative mode, it is available on here, but here's the night vision mod. And obviously it'll spawn on SWAT helmets and military helmets. And all it really is, is just a nice spot to free up a space you got your night vision. Obviously, it's way too freaking bright for that. Let me go into DM mode. Let's go into here and let's turn it to. Let's turn it to. Night times. So now it's night times. So now you've got NBR. Oh, you got some zombies running around over there, too. How nice is that? But the benefit of this. Oh, wait, why does that increase it? That makes no sense. The, the whole point, okay, so the whole point of this mod, guys, was actually to make it to where when you're crouched like this and you turn on the NBR, it doesn't, it shouldn't increase your, uh, it shouldn't increase your sensibility, basically, because the headlight does do that. But the other thing, too, if you wanted to use the NBR, it actually had to go on your eyewear. Well, what if you're running around with some, oh, good Lord, what if you're running around with some lucky goggles? and you're trying to loot stuff, but you want to use the night vision goggles to see everything. Then you got to constantly swap it out. You got to swap out back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's just annoying. And it takes up space in your inventory to have that. So that's why we turn it into a mod. I'm going to have to take a look and find out why this increases your sense because night vision should not increase your sense. Let's let's compare that actually to a uh, to a headlight mod.
Uh, let's go. Let's go mining helmet. I think mining helmet will probably just be the better one. Yeah, where's that? But it, this doesn't have the mod in it. <laughs> let's just type in mod. Where is it? Uh, there it is. All right. So we are at eight. We turn this on. We go to twenty-two. Let's go inside of here. Let's modify you. Take you and put you in there. Complete. Turn you on. Still takes it to twenty-two. Hmm. Yep, we're gonna have to fix that. That's that's definitely a part of the mod that I did not want to happen, and that could be the reason why it might actually be how he made the mod, because this right here might actually just be the headlight mod with just the night vision look. And that could be what it possibly is. Well, I'll, I'll have to ask Donovan and, and kind of check and and see. Um, but yeah, that's essentially that. So let's go ahead and let's actually uh, let's exit back out here. Hold on. OK, let me go ahead and turn that off. Let's turn the display capture back on. We'll go ahead and turn my face cam back on. Hello, I'm back. I'm slouching a little bit and the camera's off center a little. Oh, well, you know, I don't really use the face cam that much because obviously I want people to see the game and everything. Uh, okay, we can go ahead and close all this out right here. Now, let's go ahead and get this installed. So, for most people, inside of your C drive, inside of your program files, inside of Steam, inside of Steam apps, inside of Common, you'll have 7 Days to Die. Me, I don't have 7 Days to Die installed on my C drive. I got it actually installed on my F drive. So, inside of your Steam library, navigate to your 7 Days to Die. Now, inside of here, there won't be a folder if you don't have any mods installed. There won't be a folder called mods. You actually have to create it. So you create a folder named mods just like that. Capital M, lowercase o, lowercase d, lowercase s. And inside of here, let me do this. And let's go ahead and open up uh, downloads. Let's split the screen here. We'll go inside of here. Now, we don't want to copy this one. We want to go into the modlets, and this is what we want to move over. So, for example, we'll take this and move that over to here. Obviously, I don't want to replace it because I believe I'm actually working on a development branch. I think I'm working on a development branch. I don't know. You know what? Screw it. We'll just transfer it over. Moves that over. If you want the night fog, then you can move the night fog over. And if you want the UI, you can just throw the UI over there. Now, there are other ones in the optional. These ones right here are ones that I don't really use. This has got craftable dukes, which utilizes a good amount of brass and a good amount of iron to make dukes. You make your own money kind of deal. Big backpack is what it sounds like. It increases the inventory to 60, I think, as opposed to, I think it's, what is it, like 38 or something like that right now. This is default. Craftable parts makes it so you can actually craft all the weapon and armor parts that you can craft them in the workbench for, you know, a cost of steel, mechanical parts, polymers, so on and so forth, depending on what they are. Level faster is kind of not necessarily anymore because when you when you create a game, you can actually change how much experience you get now. This is all that does is just increases the experience gain. Mega backpack is a obviously a lot bigger backpack, 120 as opposed to 60 as opposed to like 30 some or whatever. Mega books, mega loot bags, mega perks. This right here just increases the amount of books that you find, the amount of schematics you find. This right here increases the amount of loot bag drop rate. I think 5% is what it is for the normal one. So now it jumps to the 20 and all the way up to 80% for radiated. And then you've got the other one, oop, which is mega perks, which I believe jumps it to four per level as opposed to two with uh, more perks. So this is mega perks. There's more perks and mega perks. So you can change those up. Now, if you do add these, so like, for example, if you were to go in and say you want to add mega loot bags, what you actually would want to do is you would actually want to go through instead of using AIO, you would want to actually pick and piecemeal them together because mega loot bags isn't inside of AIO, but inside of AIO, is more loot bags. So depending on how the game loads it, it might load more loot bags after the mega loot bags, and that makes it to where the only mod that's actually active is the more loot bags as opposed to the mega ones. So if you add any of these optional ones here, 
outside of like craftable dukes, craftable parts. Uh, I think level faster is actually in there as well, right? No, level faster is not in there. So you could add level faster, craftable dukes, craftable parts, as well as mod schematics, I believe. What is mod schematics? Wish you had the, yeah. So yeah, this this is the one. Okay, so this one right here, you can convert the mod into a schematic, basically. So this one, uh, hold on, let me just highlight them real quick here so you guys can see. So these ones right here, you can add if you already have AIO. There, we'll really highlight those just to show. These ones right here, you can add to your mod list if you already have AIO. If you add any of these other ones, Mega Perks, Mega Loot Bags, Mega Books, Mega Backpack, or Big Backpack, you need to make sure not to have the AIO one. Now, this is going off of my knowledge. Uh, Donovan might ping down in the comments below on that, that I might be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure that would mess with certain things. I do not want the Mega Loot Bags. I'm going to get rid of that. And I actually don't want to have the Night Fog, at least not yet. Maybe a little bit later in the series, I'll do that. Um... For the most part, this is what I run with. So if you're trying to play along with me or if you want to use the same mods that I use, I just use AIO and UI. Those are the only ones that I add on. I don't add on the craftable dupes. I don't add on craftable parts. Uh, I don't worry about the level faster and I don't worry about the mod schematics. So, but that, after you're done loading that in there, all it takes now is for you to start up Seven Days to Die, um, which you can open up the seven days to die launcher. So if you open up the seven days to die launcher, you don't want to use anti-cheat mode. So make sure you've got that unchecked and then run and save as default. So whenever you open up seven days to die, you won't be loading up with anti-cheat because if you're using the AIO model it here, it does have better collectors, which cannot be ran properly with EAC running outside of that. Once you get in there, an easy way to test, an easy way to find out if the mods and everything loaded nicely in that is when you get in there and you see the different UI. If the different UI, if it looks different than what it used to be, you know your mods have loaded properly and should be good to go. So yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully this kind of explains some things. Um, once again, this isn't a tutorial on how to make mods or modlets. Um, I probably should have put that in the in, in the beginning but I'll make sure to reiterate it and maybe I'll do a text overlay or something like that. So people don't go, Oh, this, this isn't a XML mod tutorial. This is just how to install them. Well, yeah, but it also goes over these mods right here. Now, a lot of these mods right here and that were changes and all that stuff like that, that I originally used to do in my XML edits. I used to actually go in. So I used to go into, into data here. I used to go into, Oh, where was it at? inside of config and I used to go inside of, let's see, there's item modifiers. Let's go, let's do something easy that I know. Let's go into recipes. So right here is your wonderful recipe in that, right? So you would go to, let's see, let's go down to nine millimeter ammo. It says nine millimeter bullet ball for some reason, which is odd because it should just say nine millimeter, but I guess that's their naming scheme that changed. So say I didn't want it to take one gunpowder, I wanted to take two. So I'd go in here and I'd hit that and then I'd save and now inside of the game, it would be two. Well, every single time that an update came through, I would have to go through and redo this every single time because it would go through and it would change all of this back when you downloaded a new version of it. Well, Donovan came along and he's like, you know, there's an easier way to do that. They implemented XPath, which makes it to where it changes the arguments in there. So you don't have to go through and edit your XMLs every single time that there is a patch update. So and ever since then, this is what I've been using. So he's been the forefront runner on the mods essentially since then. I was just the inspiration and give guidelines on what sort of formulas and whichever like that that should be used. He does the rest. He puts all in the mods. He hosts it on his GitHub right here. So you make sure that, you know, if you have any issues or anything like that, you can easily go into the issues tab here. You can go through and post it. So you can say there's there's a new issue for so and so. Obviously, you got to sign up for GitHub in order to do that, but it's a free sign up and you'll be able to post it in there. And he's really quick to respond through all this. So outside of all that, guys, that is going to uh, that's that's going to do it in this particular case right here. here we'll go a little larger. But if you got any, any questions or anything like that, definitely drop a comment down, down below. Um, 
yeah, I'm sure me and or Donovan will probably be uh, kind of sneaking and watching and all that. So hope this helped you guys out as far as installing modlets on Seven Days to Die. And hopefully you have some uh, some good zombie kills and some uh, and some good loot. But guys, until next episode, take care and take it easy.